Today we have famed boxing reporter Elise Sekpak. He started reporting the NBA in the 90s and just fell in love with boxing. This guy has one of the biggest YouTube channels in the world with almost a billion views. Every fighter knows him. Every fighter likes him. This is exciting. We're going to get we're gonna get such a unique perspective into the world of boxing like no one else has given us. Let's get into it. Ellie Sackback, everybody. Reporting. Welcome to the champ and the chump. <laughs> and who's the chump? You. Me. Welcome to our show, people. What's going on? How you guys doing? Jeremy. What's up, buttercup? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. You you look like you are the most famous reporter in the whole history of boxing. Not even close, but you look like Joe Rogan right now. <laughs> Me too. That? I That's look good. more like Joe Rogan. No, where you I'm at Joe now, Joe. Ellie? I'm in LA. Back yeah, off. I'll show you guys where I am. Hold on. Let's see. What's that? A mall? A mall. Yeah, it's a mall. The COVID's almost over. We got. They said they're gonna open up June first. So we got two more months of COVID. What what mall is that? Uh, Beverly Center. Oh, you're right down the street from my house. Oh, you're out here? Yeah, I, I live here. What are you talking about? I didn't know you lived in Beverly Hills. So, Ellie, where are, you, where are you from originally? I know you grew up, you were born in Israel, but where'd you grow up? Uh, in Israel. I came here at 20 to LA. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, so Hebrew must... language? Language Hebrew. You're first, so you first... must... Oh, you must learn English in, in Israel, right? Because your English yeah, is Yeah, everybody. Forward. Yeah, everyone in Israel uh, speaks English. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I, I was looking into you, man, and I didn't realize that you had started with a, with a pretty... You were covering NBA initially, right? Basketball? I covered the NBA for 10 years, and um, I was the first to really do videos with YouTube with the NBA, and they didn't know how to digest me. So the players loved it, and the league adjusted. And it was a lot of fun. I covered Kobe for many years, Shaq. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one day I met Manny Pacquiao and I uh, switched to boxing. So I was about to ask you, your switch to boxing was what, meeting Manny? Yeah, because I started covering him just once. Then I came back another day and another day. And then that, that was it for me. Because once you, Jeremy will tell you this. Once you get into the boxing world, it's a different vibe than anything else. And you kind of get sucked in. You get sucked so, in. You can't figure out. You can't figure out which way to go. Left, right, up, back, down, straight. Boxing is a crazy world. Well, this crazy, is... But, but I'm going to tell you this. Look, if you want to interview an NBA player, he may do an interview, he may not. It depends on his mood. And you could go to a game and get there at one in the afternoon and leave at midnight and get no content. If you walk in the boxing gym, Jeremy, how many interviews can you leave in one afternoon? Oh, you can do them all. You can, you can do everybody in the gym. Exactly. And they'll be like, don't leave. Come back. <laughs> That's no. That's very true. That's very true. So, <clears throat> you you mostly. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you mostly cover the California fight scene, or you go all over? All over the world. Okay. I mean, okay. because boxing has taken me to Azerbaijan, uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, China, all over the world. There's boxing everywhere, and, and it's such a global sport. When I switched from NBA to boxing, people told me that it was the dumbest thing. It was about 11, 12 years ago. They said, boxing's dead. Why would you leave such a mainstream thing like the NBA? But they don't understand the power of boxing is worldwide. So for my first three years on YouTube with the NBA, I, I had 10 million views. And that's very respectful. 10 million views, you know? Wow. In the, in the 10 years of covering boxing, I have something like 900 million views. Wow. And, I, I'm not just, and I'm not just interviewing the superstars. I'm interviewing everybody. So obviously, there's a mm -hmm. hunger for boxing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, are there any? Because I, I saw that you had a reality, sh something about a reality show with, with Robert Garcia, right? Yeah. Uh, I did the Re Robert Garcia reality show. And it's funny because the Diaz brothers, Nick and Nate, they love that reality show. And a lot of people basically, it's just following the daily activities of a boxing gym where Brandon Rios, Marcos Maidana, Mikey Garcia, just um, different kind of, put it like this. When I covered the NBA, if Kobe scores 50, it's a story. If Kobe doesn't score, it's a story. Right. Off season. But in boxing, they only like to cover, let's say, May where the fights in uh, May and September. But in between, you don't really get a lot of daily content. So I started right. just covering the gym daily, and that's how that developed. Oh. 
you, you, um, you, you, can you slow down? Let me ask a question. So your thing is catching catching guys in the gym, just in the middle of their training, or at the end of their training, and then just give them a couple questions and let them go. That's it. Yep. The, like yesterday, I was in the gym with Canelo. So while he's jumping rope, I can't do a full interview. He's training, but you can ask Canelo, who's the most famous person you ever met? Because he met everyone. Mm -hmm. You guys know the answer? Who's the most famous person? I knew the answer. I, thought, I even told Canelo. I know the answer, but I want to hear what you have to say. The uh, most the famous? Most, yes, that he had dinner with. President, maybe? I don't. I have no idea. I'm, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to say... There's no way you're going to get this. I'm, uh, of course I'm not going to get it, but dude, I'm fucking smart. Billy D. Williams. That's wow, you got very close. Thing, Bill Clinton. Yeah, I was right. I said the president. Yeah, but you didn't say which, but he said Bill, so he's 50% he's <laughs> yeah. right. But I'm like, but that's your right. But Jeremy, you, you got to know where your pocket's in. Where can you squeeze in? Where's the time to just quiet? Like, a lot of networks don't know boxing etiquette, etiquette. And I see a big network come in the gym, and they're used to covering baseball, basketball, football, and they'll be like, okay, everybody be quiet. We're recording. It doesn't work like that. Right. You have to know if a person's having a terrible day, just turn off the camera. Don't even try that day. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, so, they'll, they'll, they'll feel like you're there to post them and make them look bad. And, and if I upload, a, if I record a sparring and one guy gets his ass kicked, I can't post it. It's personal. So, no, of course. So that was what I was going to ask you next. Is there, uh, you seem like you have a good rapport with most of the fighters, right? Have you, are there any stories that come to mind that you, that you could talk about where a fighter got real pissed off at you for whatever reason? Yeah, no, of course. People will, listen, we're human and people will get mad at you. So a few years ago, there was a video of Tyson Fury where he punched himself in a fight. You could Google it. Mm -hmm. He threw an uppercut and he missed and he pretty and he got rocked yeah. by his own punch. I seen that. Yeah. So I remember going to the gym with Brandon Real. So it was a 10 goose. He was training with Ricky at the time and Brandon was emulating it. And Fury saw it and he took it to heart. It bothered him. So he, to this day, he's mad at me. But, <laughs> but most of the time, oh. it's banter. If I talk trash about a fighter and he sees me with that, I don't, I don't really talk a lot of trash. But if I picked against him, they would rub it in my face. Like, you picked against me and I won. But mm. fighters, they take everything personal. Where in the yeah. NBA, I used to do a lot of your mama jokes. I can't do your mama jokes with fighters. Really? Yep. That's so good. They're all mama's boys. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Hey, so um, <clears throat> what's, the, what's the, the Latin heavyweight, the big, the big guy? Um, is it Ruiz? Yeah. Is he, gonna, is he fighting again or what's he going to do? Which one? Ruiz, Ruiz. he's talking about. Ruiz. Okay, what's the first the, name? The, the guy, the... Andy the, Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, yeah. What's his name? Andy Ruiz. Jer so, so, Ellie, let me just give you a background here. Between the two of us, I know current boxing. Jeremy doesn't, and he fucking hates boxing, which is kind of a funny dynamic. Hence that question. Well, I'm going to hmm. say something interesting before we answer the question. So I go to a lot of athletes' homes. Sometimes I shoot, sometimes they say we're worried someone's going to see the video and break in, so don't upload it. It's happened. But when I go to a fighter's home, the fighter never has anything boxing in his house. Never. Not on the walls, nothing. They, tell him about it, Jeremy. Am I right or wrong? Because we do it all the time. No need to see it when you go home. You go in the house of a fan, and it looks like the National Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Um, so um, that's one thing when you said he doesn't like boxing. Because Jeremy was a fighter. He fought MMA. He fought boxing. He was on MTV. He fought all overseas. He knows the ugly side of boxing, the business side. If it was just about the sport, he would love it. But when he sees, like, he's fighting and he's getting paid 10000 but a manager is getting paid 400 or 300 or the promoter is a million, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It's kind of right. like the movie um, with Nick Nolte and Shaq. What was that, that movie? Blue Chip? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Where Nick God, Nolte yeah. in the end... In the end, Nick Nolte, he just wants to coach kids. Because the whole movie, he's doing like stuff that's shady, illegal. Taking bribes, paying fighters. So, I had this theory that they should give trainers a higher percentage and give less to managers. But it's not going to huh. ever change, so. Managers hmm. beat breaks off if, if, you, if you, don't, you don't stay on top of your, your game. And those fighters, they don't know. They just think, hey, this guy's giving them money. Help him. Or he gave his dad ten thousand bucks. You know, so the next thing you know, you know, when you gotta 
you got to fight for a million bucks, and at the end of the day, with that million bucks is is only four hundred fifty thousand dollars of your cut because you're paying back all that shit he said he gave you. That's the money. That's the yeah. Point. Unfortunately, fighters don't understand that when a promoter says here's an advancement, it's not a signing bonus. They're gonna it's an advancement, so they're gonna get it back. Oh yeah, they take it straight away. Here's one thing. Look, every every week or every day, I learn something new about the business of boxing. One thing is to learn the boxing and learn technique and learn to watch a fight and break it down. Another part of it is to learn all the pockets where, how money works, how, how everything works in this business. And it's crazy because I learned so much. Like, there's so many ways to make money in boxing. Like, have if you, you have a, hmm? Sorry, go I was going to say, I was going to say, have you ever, did you ever fight amateur anything, sparring anything? No, a, a few times I dabbled with it, but here's the problem. To fight for me, I would like a real training camp. Like, do like eight weeks of everyday training. I'll do it. But I'm here two days in L.A., three days on the road, three days somewhere. You can't do a real training camp. Jeremy, how long does it take to build stamina to, to train? Seriously, can I do it with two days a week? Six to eight, six to eight weeks. Five, six days a week. So there's no shortage of opponents, but I can't stop right. working for two months. Right. But it would and, be a great I mean, experience. It would be something uh, great. I mean, today, look, all these uh, exhibitions and YouTube fights, they're all making crazy money. They're making much more money than fighters who are making. Jake Paul's fighting this weekend. He's going to get paid, what, eight, ten million? Well, is, that a, is that how much he's making? Well, the two TikTokers, TikTokers, uh, Taylor Holden and Bryce Hall, they're each getting paid five and six million. So what do you think about that? About about these YouTubers, because you know Jake Paul, he's not a bat, he's not an awful fighter, but he's definitely not a seasoned or good fighter yet. He's not a fucking fighter. He's a YouTube guy. He's worked out for six, eight weeks in the he gym. He has. I mean, Ellie, have you seen him fight live? I've seen have him you fight. seen him spar? I mean, I've seen him spar. He's he's really good. He's very committed. But you have to understand, if there wasn't Corona, if there was no COVID, because of Jake Paul, every boxing gym would be packed with kids. He has 50 million followers combined on social media. So if you as a kid watch Karate Kid and then you wanted to run, learn karate, I think that's the kind of effect they're having on boxing. Not that all their fans will become fighters, but they'll go into gyms. And actually every gym that I've been to this week in LA, even though they're operating at a smaller percentage, they're all packed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the good effect that it's happening. Uh, is it, also, it also will force fighters to step up their social media game. Because- yeah. I, I I agree. I think even though he's he's a bit of a circus act sort of to real fighters, um, it is shining a light on the sport which the sport needs. Man, shining a light, slap that guy across the mouth and break his jaw. You would. This is great, and and that guy's gonna make more money than I have ever made in a, in a fight in one. But but, now, but but you could say he earned it. He built himself up. He has the following. He brings in the eyeballs. He's selling the pay per views. He did the homework. That's for sure. He, I mean, if, if if Jeremy, if if social media was was big back in the you know when you fought, you might have been in the same boat. True. Okay, Jeremy, do you have kids? Yeah, of course. How old are they? Be, uh, between thirteen and thirty. Did they? Well, thirty might be a little old, but your thirteen year old is he a fan of Jake Paul? No. Oh man, maybe I don't. Know. He probably is. So he's gonna he's gonna order the pay per view for you to see. Thirteen year old is a game. He's okay. A game. Not a YouTuber. No, no, no but I'm saying their fan base. They have massive fan yeah. bases. So uh, I think he have Instagram. So he. But, he but you have to look at this on the other hand too. They're fighting, but their undercard is boxers. You have Regis Pro Grace. So they're making money too. Maybe they're making more in Thriller. Teofimo's making more in Thriller. Than what he would have made with his own promoter. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, so, so let me ask you this: of all the fighters that 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 you've been around, you've been around many. Is there any one or two that just the skill really just stands out? And I'm asking because somebody like you, who's been around so many fighters, for something to really stand out, really shows the level of you know what I mean, skill that it really is. I'm gonna tell you a few names that stand out. Because it's not only skill, but it's the work ethic and the way they work. It's, of course, Mayweather, Pacquiao, mm -hmm. Canelo, Gervonta Davis, Virgil Ortiz. The, when you see, like, Mayweather and Pacquiao, they're not just talented boxers. They're talented athletes. 
And Manny every day does 2,600 sit-ups daily. 1,300 in the morning, 1,300 at night. Mayweather spars 10 and, 10 and 12 minute rounds. Jeremy, how hard is it to spar three minutes? Yeah, it's not easy. So what about nine minutes and 10 minutes with no breaks? <coughs> wow. wow. Okay. So those, so those guys stand out to you? And they should. Dude, those, those guys have... You're cutting out a little, Jeremy. That those guys have hit the top shelf in the game. But, you, but the work in the gym is what made them that way. Look, for someone like Mayweather, who's made almost a billion dollars, he still trains like he never won a fight. Canelo's yeah. the same way. Canelo's making 20, 30, 40 million a fight. I was with him in the gym yesterday. He's still hungry. He still wants to be in the history books. And I was joking with him. I said, Canelo, I want to see you move up to heavyweight, win a title like James Tony, like Roy Jones, and come back down. He's like, <laughs> no, that's, that's too much. He's, he knows. <coughs> but I today, mean, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish what you're saying. It's not, he's a solid 60, right? Canelo at this point? 60, 68, 75. He's fighting those three? Yep. He was the, since Henry Armstrong fought in the 30s and early 40s, he was champion the three divisions at the same time, and Canelo was champion the three divisions. And look, if Javante Davis wins his next fight, uh, June 26 against Mario Barrios, he'll be a three division champ at the same time, 30, 35, and 40. He's fighting wow. a 140 guy. I mean, you know, the only thing that that I don't like about these Jake Paul guys and um, is that they do make the sport seem like it's easier than it really is to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Should be, but, but sport's not easy. Boxing's not easy. Just strength and conditioning workouts are very hard. I did one with Mikey not too long ago. It was hard. And, and I'm oh. sure they didn't even go all out. Yeah. But no, I know. I mean, I should be fighting. The is easy. Know. The train is easy. Nothing about... Look, yeah, Kobe Bryant made basketball look easy. Jordan did. No one could do those moves, but they're good. Um, I, I don't know if they make it look easy, but... Well, so what I mean easy case. is, yeah. What I mean by easy, that I guess you missed. That's not. I meant it, it. It 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 lets people looking on from the outside think like, oh, I could do this, and it's not that hard, and it's not true, but that's the impression it gives. Yeah, but I I don't know if it does that. I think they're opening up the door to a lot of people that never watch boxing, to a lot of people that don't know what boxing is. Because people think boxing is knockout, and it's not knockout. Boxing is an art. It's a sport. It's it's more than just coming in and knocking. Just like MMA is not just uh, uh, choking someone out. It's not tap out. Mm. But, but I think, listen, let me ask you, Jeremy. Have you watched Ben Askren throw punches? Yeah, I'm sorry, say what? Have you seen Ben Askren, Jake Paul's opponent, throw punches? I have. Okay, is he trolling or is he really that bad? He's not. Okay, so, Jeremy, this guy's a, a Jake Paul, this, this YouTube jerk-off, is fighting this MMA guy. Jeremy doesn't know any of this stuff. Uh... No, he, he throws punches as a typical MMA or who doesn't really strike much. It, it, it's not awful, but it's not going to do any damage. He looks, he looks pretty bad. But I, I thought if, that he was faking it. Like, no one could be that bad. It was not, slow and no power, yeah. But if he's not putting his hips behind it, then there's no power. So. No, no, no hips. He's just throwing forward. And look, he's, yeah. he's after hip surgery replacement. And he's, not, he's a wrestler. He was on Team USA to the Olympics as a, as a wrestler, but... Yeah, so his whole thing is grab and hold, not, not. Yeah, but there's no there's no grabbing really. Yeah, but I'm but, but because that's his nature, that's what he's going to do. It's well, not you can't for your natural instinct. If you're if you're a grappler, wrestler, that's what you're gonna do. When when, when you hit this fan, you're gonna grab you're gonna grab and hold. You know, he can grab and hold the guy, squeeze a little bit of life out of him, and then let him go. Well, and that's my point. He's fighting guys like Nate Robinson and then fighting this dude, and he's going to wipe them out, and it's going to look easy to a lot of people. When You know what I mean? It's also all about the opponent selection. Yeah, so but, but, but it's also prize fighting, and they have to sell pay-per-views, so they have to build them up, and that's okay. Listen, Ben Ashman wouldn't take it, but he's getting paid probably the most money. He's probably getting paid more than what he got paid as a UFC champion. Mm. So. So do you, what do you guys um, think about this? Let me, I got to ask you this. Oscar De La Hoya is coming back. Marcus is fighting Cotto. Marco Antonio Barrera is fighting Jesus Otokaras. You have all these great legends. Maybe Jeremy Williams should come back and fight someone. Jeremy would. You said you would. Eh, maybe. But I, I, would, I, would, I, would, uh, I would drop down the cruiser. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight heavy. 
so yeah, that 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 would work, but I wouldn't here, do it. Here's the difference, though, Ellie. So those guys are all fighting, right? We had Chris Bird on our podcast. Chris Bird wants to come back, but yes. Chris Bird and De La Hoya, those guys are going like they want to get a real license and fight. The other guys are doing exhibitions, and there's Correct. a huge difference. You That's know. True. You know, yeah, it's not, I, you know, I love Chris Bird, that, the Jeremy too, that's his old USA teammate, but he shouldn't, you know, it's, it's, it's a young man's sport, or at least younger than Chris, right? Well, here's my theory. Until we're going to, unfortunately, until we're going to see like a tragedy, this will continue, continue, continue. It's a very dangerous sport. There's concussions. There's broken bones. That We don't know someone's health after being off for 10, 15, 20 years, where their condition is. Because young people are injured and, it takes weeks and weeks, if not months, to recover. Jeremy, what's the worst injury you had? Hands. How long what? does it take for your hands to heal after it breaks? Six weeks? Eight. Eight weeks. Now, imagine when you get older, it takes much longer to heal. Everything. Yeah. 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 It, no, it, it does. Um, I, I, I just think, like, I, I would love to see De La Hoya fight because he's still young-ish. What is he, 47? 48, 47. He's your age. Yeah. So, so I think he could still do a decent job, but it's all about who he fights. You know, I, th I heard that he's trying to fight Triple G. Did you hear that, Ali? Is that true? No, that's a, that's a long time ago, but they also were trying to make Mungia Triple G, but that ran into some problems. Um, Triple G, I think the zone, from their perspective, they would like to do Triple G and Canelo. I think Canelo has other problems, other issues, not problems, but Canelo has other plans where Demetrius Andre was fighting this weekend, that's a good opponent for Triple G. He's a 160 champion. You guys, are uh -huh. you guys familiar with him, Boo Boo? Yes, I am, yeah. He, he's a very outspoken guy, very talented, great boxer, mover, undefeated. Mm. I mean, I think, the, the, obviously, the Roy Jones-Tyson fight just popped open this whole new fucking thing that people people need it and there's also a pandemic going on so everybody was so pent up you know what i mean it just exploded now and you have all these other fighters doing it i'm gonna be honest with you if they did that fight in may when tyson first came back it would have sold 15 million because there was nothing going on everybody was so excited mm -hmm. to see tyson come back they waited till what october november and it still did great it's number eight all time in selling pay-per-view with 1.5 but mm -hmm. if they would have done it earlier they would have killed it because really, there was no nothing on TV. Um, so my man here, my man Marshall here, put out a comment saying that he thinks 48 is too old to fight. Ellie, do you think 48 is too old to fight? We're not all carbon copy. Everybody's different. Bernard Hopkins at 48 was good. He fought to what, 52, 53? Uh, George Foreman uh -huh. came back after 10 years off and won the title also in his 50s. But everybody's different. You got to do the physical and the real physical. Not go to a chiropractor who clears you. Jeremy, I've seen a lot of funny stuff when it comes to boxing physicals. The wrong guy shows up with the other guy's ID and they clear him. All kinds of weird things. Yeah, boxing but, dude, boxing's a business. Man. I so, feel like... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm saying, but if you're a healthy 48 and you live a good lifestyle, like Mayweather could probably fight till his 60s. He's still ripped. He's still very... He's never... He doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs. But but if and you have a health concern, forty eight. Oh yeah, Marshall's right. Yeah, he didn't he didn't take a lot of punches, Mayweather. You know, I think that's also a, another factor. If you have certain fighters who have long careers and were more given out the punches, not taking them, so that that's different, right? Yeah, but listen, with Mayweather, it's so amazing. He had fifty fights, and you could count the times he got hit. You could physically count them. You say, okay, Mosley hit him, Maidana hit him, uh, Zab Judah hit him. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, like. The fact that you figure out, then, okay, see, Castillo and maybe Emmanuel Augustus. That's it. The rest of the fights mm -hmm. where he cruised. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so the, let me ask you something. Uh, do you have a favorite fighter of all time, Ellie? No, nah, it's everybody. I have a lot of favorite fighters. Everybody's different. Um, Roberto Duran is great. I went to visit him in Panama. That was a trip. Chavis really? Senior is great. Yeah. He's, he's, he lives in the same house that he always grew up in. Not as a kid. At five year old, he lived in the, in the hood, hood, but he lives in the area, and the whole house has his pictures in front. Like, mm -hmm. everyone knows that's Roberto Duran's house. Wow. Um, I think that's and, and he could be the president of Panama if he wanted to, and he's great. So he's one of your, he's one of your favorites? Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Um, from the old school guy, Shane Mosley, one of the best. 
I'm trying to think of guys that are, are not active right now. Who else is not active from, from the great ones? Chavez Sr. is cool. He used to not yeah. like me. He used to have Why? more patience for me. I don't know, because I have dumb shit. <laughs> but like, his, do, you, his son, do you remember a specific, like, do you remember <clears throat> what happened, the story? No, but I probably asked him, like, like who was your toughest opponent, or who do you want to fight, or how would you do against Mayweather? Whatever I asked, like, it, it ticked him off. But then his son told him that I'm cool, and ever since then, we're good. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Chavez Jr. That's funny. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, did you did you ever used to uh, be around Roy Jones? I've been around him a little bit. And? He's okay. <laughs> he's okay. Well, well, what do you mean? <clears throat> I mean, he's okay. He's not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not close to him like I am with the other guys. Like, I don't know him like that. Mm -hmm. so so for, from all the guys who are coming back, and you can just you can make a dream fight. Which what what two knuckleheads would you put together? Let me think. Anyway, it doesn't make a difference. The guy could be a twenty to twelve pounder. The other guy could be a nine. okay. Chavez and Duran, they're both in great shape. They both Ooh. train. And, <clears throat> but and Duran just sparred recently, like a year ago. He was sparring. He was sparring Shane Mosley, and he sparred um, Sergio Mora. And, he sparred Mosley. Yeah, he sparred Mosley. He moved because Mosley was getting ready for a fight, and Duran worked his corner. He fought Whoa. in Colombia. That was Were one you of there? Mosley's last fight. No, but I have the video. It was one of Mosley's last fights. But um, that would be interesting. I don't think they ever fought. <sighs> no, they didn't. Wow. I, I wish. That'd be, how, how come you didn't release that video? They told you not to. No, I did. It's up. I'll send you a link. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, what about. So, so now, now I'll say two heavyweight fights. <laughs> Wait, fight. Two guys coming back. Two heavyweights. Let me think. What would be an interesting fight? Maybe Lennox Lewis and Tyson if they came back. Again? Again? No, I mean, let me think. What else do you have? Shannon Briggs and... Uh... <laughs> Somebody just said Jeremy Williams versus Chris Ariola in the comments. <laughs> well, Chris Ariola is fighting on May 1st against Andy Ruiz. Really? And there's somebody who... Yeah, there's somebody who's a in little, LA. a little. I feel like Ariel is quite past his prime and took some some punishment over the years. No, he looked great his last fight. He fought Adam Kawanaki and they broke the record with most punches ever thrown per round. And he's been training with Joe Goosen. You train with Joe too, of course, Jeremy. Yeah, Joe. So Joe will always have you get ready. You're not gonna be if you're a Joe Goosen fighter. You're coming in ready. And yeah. I visited Andy Ruiz yesterday, and he looks great. He's in the best shape he's ever been. I told him he could go down a cruiserway. Really? Is he really that little? What's, well, he's still what's he at now? He looks super slim. Mm. Well, he looks super slim. Do, do you know what he's weighing now? Like the yeah, actual I number? Know. He's like 250, but he's solid yeah. 250. Slim for him. That's yeah, crazy. Great. They're both great. And Andy's great. Chris is great. They're really good dudes. That's Damn. crazy. That's a good one. Yeah. And, and, oh. and Mike Tyson came back again with the you just Ooh. cut out completely. I said, and if Mike Tyson was going to fight again, who would that fight look like? I don't know, because honestly, he could have knocked out Roy Jones and he held back. Yeah. He was the exhibition, <clears throat> and it was good entertainment, but he really, you could see, you know Mike, and he was like holding himself back a little bit, and Roy was hugging a lot. Um, yeah. He could fight, like I said, he could fight Shannon Briggs, he could fight James Tony, he could fight... Um, maybe one of the Klitschko's. Do you do you know since since you're kind of, you know, have your ear to the streets in the business? Do you know what happened with the Holyfield Tyson negotiations? I thought that was kind yes. of sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what Mike Tyson's people told me. Actually, uh, Tyson ran for it. <laughs> no, okay. um, Holyfield people put out a statement that Mike turned down the fight, but Mike's people say that's not wasn't the case. They just told me we didn't turn down twenty five million. We just wanted fifty percent of the profits because. If it sells, let's say it sells a million pay-per-view, right? A million mm -hmm. pay-per-view times 70, let's say, is 70 million, right? Mm -hmm. So half of that is 35. So why would you settle? They basically, Mike Tyson people basically said, he needs to fight more than us. We're not thirsty. We're not desperate. So now Evander's going to fight, uh, what's the name, Kevin uh, McBride? Right, McBride, yeah, which who wants to see that? Yeah. Well, they're putting it on, but... Um, yeah, that's what happened. So I, I guess the negotiations, and it didn't work out. So 
You know, and that that's what worries me about possibly also happening with, with Joshua and Fury. Because that could happen, right? They could just fall through. It's not signed yet. Yeah. Somebody just said, if, if Holyfield needs a check, stars. Don't pay. Oh, don't Yeah, because uh, I just heard that um, Tyson Fury's side said that if, if, if it's not signed and sealed by Tuesday, he's moving on. Is that true? Yeah, but Tuesday was two days ago. Oh, so it meant this Tuesday. <laughs> I thought it meant this coming Tuesday. No, I mean, he meant this Tuesday. But, but oh. what I don't like about that fight, they keep they have announced it 25 times already. Either yeah. announce it or keep it moving. The thing is, there's arbitration with Wilder that's going to still go into May. So really, they don't know what they could do till that arbitration is cleared. So it may be Wilder Fury 3, and then it's going to be Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, a rematch. Did you, did, did you ever speak with Wilder um, and hear, his, hear him talk about all of the, the conspiracy theories or all the, the reasons why he thought he lost that fight? I did not, but I, I'm like this. If you have hardcore evidence, then you could run with it. If there's no evidence, how can I push it? Because I don't want to look foolish. I don't want to say... This happened and that happened. Only he knows. Were there weights in the gloves? I don't know. I can't tell you yes. I can't tell you no. Because, Jeremy, anything is possible in boxing. I don't put anything past anyone. If you want to cheat, you're going to find a way to cheat. You can mask anything. There's a million ways to get away with stuff. If you're not cheating, you might. Wait, you cut out. One more time. If you're not cheating in boxing, you're not trying to win. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Robert Garcia's son, Pete, I love saying that as a joke. He says, if but, you're not cheating, you're not trying. But, this, so, but, but Jeremy, there's a difference. Jeremy's talking about little dirty tricks. These guys are asserting that this dude had weights holding weights in his gloves. There's a difference well, between that and what you... Yes, but they were egg weights. You ever seen egg weights? People use them in shadow box? Yeah. Yeah. So you could put them in your, in your palm. I don't, like I said, I don't know if he had them or not. So I can't dismiss it, but I don't have evidence, so I can't report it. Well, first of that, and then, I'm sorry? Ahead, you can't, you can't, you can't. Oh, point, 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 we don't. You're cutting out again, man. Come a little closer, you, maybe? You can't, you can't point at somebody and say, hey, you're dirty. 100%. So, get up, hey, wait, no one. Exactly. I can't accuse someone. So, as much as I don't yeah. like Fury, I'm never going to accuse him of what he's saying, number one. But at the same time, Anything's well, possible. You know, I, I he also... Even, I'm sorry, go ahead. Anything is possible. And I've seen crazy things in life where... I know, for example, Vada, they were testing one fighter the entire camp and didn't test the other one, but said they did. Mm. So, things happen. I mean, I know... Here. It's a you know, business. With Fury, with, with Wilder, he went from that, then he went to uh, Mark, Mark Breland betrayed him, then he went to they drugged him... And then the last one I heard was he put, they pushed the glove deck, like pulled the glove up. So I don't even, didn't even make sense to me what he was even talking about. Listen, I don't know exactly the details. Uh, I do know if they fight again, they're going to have their P's and Q's and everything. And they're going to make sure everything's on the up and up, which should have been the case yeah. the first time. I th- yeah, I, I, think, you know, I, I think Wilder is done. I don't think he's done. He's been training, no. and, and let's see what happens if he has Look, another fight. Any big wins, you know? I'm gonna tell you that. That's what I believe. You, you don't have believe a bunch what, of I don't believe he has a bunch of big wins in him anymore. Well, he has 42 hmm. knockouts and 43 fights. Yeah. Well, I I gotta get going, but we'll do this again soon. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Good talking to you, man. All right. For Please. sure, Jeremy. All right, we'll be in touch. Reporting. Yeah, man.